Well, hello. Let's talk about grief, which I know doesn't sound like a lot of fun, because grief, by definition, is not fun. But grief is universal to the human experience. We all deal with loss. Or rather, we all experience loss. We don't necessarily always deal with it well. We've known for some time that third culture kids and people in transients tend to experience more loss more frequently with less recovery time. Because every move is a series of losses. A loss of familiar people and places and experiences, a loss of social standing and belonging. And all of these losses stack up and cause grief. And the truth of the matter is, grief is always going to be expressed. You cannot stop it. It's either going to come out in ways that we have some control over, or it's going to come out in ways we don't expect. A lot of behavioral problems in students at international schools actually can find its root in unresolved grief. If you feel out of control because of a loss of familiarity, we can actually become very controlling in other ways to compensate. The global pandemic has caused a lot of loss for everybody. People have experienced the loss of loved ones. We've all experienced a loss of certainty. We've all experienced the loss of being able to socially connect in ways that we're used to. So now more than ever, we need to learn to deal with grief. One of the best coping mechanisms that I ever heard of came from a family I know who moved quite a bit, and they had a tradition that whenever they arrived at a new home, they would spend the first available weekend baking together. They would set aside the first possible Saturday and spend the entire day as a family baking cookies and pies and tarts and cakes and brownies, everything they could for a whole day. And while they were baking, they would share with each other the things that they were sad to have lost. They would talk about the familiarity in places and people and things that had to be left behind. They would talk about the friends that they were going to miss. And then at the end of the day, they would eat their sadness. They would spend an evening eating all of the pies and cakes and tarts and brownies that they had made together. This is genius for several reasons. For one thing, it's really helpful to experience an emotion internally with something we can connect to externally. So for instance, all of that sadness and grief on the inside was actually sort of communicated through baking. We took an intangible feeling internally and put it into something that we can experience through our senses externally. That helps us feel like we've processed, like we've gotten something out. The other genius thing about it is that we tend to work best in the second order when it comes to things like discussing emotions. And by that I mean that if the family had just sat down and said, let's discuss our loss, that probably would have gotten awkward or hard to get going. But by making baking the first priority, it allowed conversation about emotions and loss to become the second priority, where we deal with things far better. The reality is we're all experiencing more loss than we're used to. And so it's important now more than ever to deal with grief. Because the funny thing is, even as we come out of this crisis, we're probably going to have new things to mourn the loss of. For example, I love getting to do presentations while wearing sweatpants because the camera only sees from my shoulders up. I'm going to mourn the loss of just getting to wear sweatpants all the time. We need to deal with grief. So I say we need to be proactive and go ahead and bake some sadness.